Good morning, college football fans, and welcome to Three and Out College Edition right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. My goodness, it has been a week. Last week, oh my gosh, Division One is about as crazy as it gets right now. I don't know if we're going to get a crazier time in Division One. I'm excited for going into November because we got rivalry games. UCLA USC is probably going to be my favorite game of like the century. I'm just kidding. Uh, this time around, I don't know. It's going to be pretty awesome, but. We shall see how that goes. Also, we, today we are talking my Riverside Tigers, the only undefeated team in the 3C2A. That's right. Big game off of Mount San Antonio last week, our rivals. How about Jones losing their first game of the season to Mississippi Gulf Coast? That was crazy. Mississippi Gulf Coast earns another, I think it's their fourth straight division title in the NJCAA. We got plenty of high school stuff last night, but at least in the Inland Empire, a lot of league champions were crowned, and we're getting ready for the playoffs over here. Chandler loses their first game of the season in high school football. Chandler, Arizona, my goodness. There's so many great games to get to. As you can see, we're all over the place, y'all. And by the way, Marietta Valley will knock off this to Marietta. How about a hand clap for those guys? That was a great rivalry game. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, my boy Taryn and I are ready to rock and roll as we have ourselves one great show to get to. You are listening to 3 and Out. College Edition right here on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Welcome, 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 college football fans. Happy to have you here today. As you can hear, uh, we got the old the old track up today. Why? Quick explanation, because, you know, sometimes Mac just wants to update to their brand new Ventura stuff. And unfortunately, <laughs> uh, Spreaker hasn't updated theirs, so I, we can't use the new Mac. So we got to use the old Mac today. So unfortunately, Taryn may sound a little different this week. Coming off of the Bluetooth speaker, but hey, it's better than nothing, and well, the show must go on. So, hopefully we get that situated next week so we can get him back on Zoom. But this week, we're going to do a little old school, and well, let's rock and roll. So, first things first, my brother Taryn, how are you doing today, good sir? I am doing well, Larry. Glad to be talking to college football with you. It's going to be a barn burner, and... For those that are actually caring about the yeah, seven section playoffs, the brackets come out tomorrow. It's a numbers game with Cal Prep. 10 a.m. Pacific time, that's when all the brackets come out. And I'm hoping to discuss a little bit of some possible, some possible like nuggets for each and every one of y'all. Oh, we're going to have ourselves some fun, Taryn. So, with that said, brother, there are so many great things to get to. Uh, so much, yeah, over here in the, in the uh, Inland Empire, I was watching the Inland show right now, I was shaving, and I was uh, getting ready for the day, watching the Inland Valley Sports Show with Mr. Pep Fernandez, and he does a great job all the time, and I was watching it from last night, yeah, crazy games last night, Orange Vista earns a nice title on over here, also, I mean, uh, North going back to the playoffs, and the Ivy League. League. Orange Vista winning an Ivy League title. I like just said earlier, uh, Marietta Valley, man. Congratulations to them. They knock off Vista Marietta. Vista Marietta going like 5-5 five and five this year. That was very uncharacteristic of them. Um, but yeah, crazy. I mean, Marietta Valley rebounds after, when, after losing a couple weeks ago. That crazy game to Norco, Taryn, that you showed me. Uh, and like triple overtime by like 1.77 to 76, I think. I mean, there's so many great things going on. You know, high school football is just rank, ramping up over here uh, in California. We've got plenty, though, more coming up. As I mentioned, something crazy earlier. My gosh, North Shore out of Houston. That NFL star making high school ding lost last night, and Chandler actually did lose out of Arizona, so we got that to talk about, because so many great games, guys, modern day finishes the season in modern day fashion, I mean, just lots and lots of great things uh, coming up here on today's show, as I, as I mentioned, Riverside, staying undefeated by, in a, by a wave of just by a crazy, crazy, crazy game. Jones will lose their first game in the NJCAA this week. I mean, Terry, it, it is just crazy. So, because uh, they play on Thursday. They, well, they played on Thursday. So, we got so much to get to, brother. Let's go ahead and get on to it, y'all. So, as we always say, y'all, big ups to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
For without him, nothing is possible. And of course, big ups to all of you guys out there. For without y'all, I Sports Radio is not possible. So we thank you guys so very much for tuning in. Let's get to some football, Terrence. So first things first, brother. We're gonna start it off. Of course, we'd like to sprinkle in Division One all throughout the show. Uh, so last week, Darren, my goodness, week number eight in the NC double. Yeah, we've got some good ones today. Ohio State and Penn State is probably going to be like one of the funnest games ever. Uh, by the way, our boy Adam Karnick from IE Sports Radio is going to be calling Ohio State, Penn State on USRN 2 in just under an hour. So make sure to tune into that on Mixer.com after the show here. So he's doing his preps right now in the chat room. So his final preps, he said. So glad to have him here. Iowa, I'm uh, sorry, Ohio State last uh, last week is destroying Iowa, by the way, 50-54 to 10. But uh, yeah, Tennessee is now moved up to number three. That was incredible. Clemson nearly lost to number 14. Syracuse, yeah. That orange battle was quite to the game last week, Taryn. We had Oregon knocking off UCLA. We knew it was going to be a good one, Taryn. We knew it. We just didn't know how good. UCLA looked a little sluggish. Chip Kelly's return to Austin Stadium wasn't the best. Regardless, it was a nice victory uh, for Oregon. LSU knocks off number seven Ole Miss. I, it's just kind of hard to believe Ole Miss is that high right now. Kind of crazy, right? Rice will knock off Louisiana Tech 42-41 to 41 in overtime. Why is that significant? Because it's a good game. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that happens. <clears throat> um Let's take a look here. I mean, we had so many great games last week. Taryn, Alabama, well, they get a nice victory, 30-6 to of Mississippi State. Number 24, Mississippi State, that is. Alabama, I don't know if they can re- reestablish their footing, though, after losing to Tennessee, just saying. And then, of course, just, uh, you know, some pretty solid games down the stretch. Washington and Cal had a pretty good game, 28-21 to last week, uh, where Washington will win on the road. I mean, there was just a lot of great games, Taryn, but... With that said, uh, what what games stood out to you the most last week and why? So the first one that you actually mentioned was Clemson Syracuse. Believe it or not, Clemson was getting, I would say they were getting the break sheet matchup, but the first half, Syracuse was up 21 to 10 at halftime. And I feel bad for this guy. DJ Lee under like, he literally tried his hardest with uh, Syracuse. But unfortunately, he did get sent as, unfortunately, it was just not his day. So, Clemson had to go with their backup quarterback being, I'm going to probably put this name, Cade Clubnick, a freshman out of Austin, Texas. So, he eventually turned the tide, and the Clemson defense shut out Syracuse, and Clemson survived, which was quite impressive. So, it was that. You mentioned Oregon beating UCLA. You still have hung tough with them in the early stages of the game, but then Oregon hit the gap and basically just left UCLA in the dust. And, yeah, it was kind of expected. The one time they took UCLA, they just eaten by Oregon. And then Ole Miss losing to LSU. This goes to show that Ole Miss just, they have the flashy offense, but, they just don't have, like, I don't know if they have the defense, but like, keep up with everybody. And then Oklahoma State knocking off Texas. That could be an interesting storyline for the Big 12, especially since TCU did win. So there's quite a good number. They had uh, definitely quite a good number of games last week. And then also, I should make note of this, is that, well, San Diego State actually had competency in terms of their game play. It wasn't just the special teams and defense carrying them. They got some sort of help offensively. Yeah. And that and was I nice. I think that's pretty much it. And, uh, oh, yeah. Stanford won their second straight FBS game. Or uh, second straight game against the FBS opponent. So, congratulations, Stanford. You're actually winning against FBS opponents after... You lost, I don't know, 11 straight to FCS opponents. Yeah, you kind of want to win those. <laughs> yeah, with that said, Terry. Great games there. Today we got the game of the week, of course, for I mean, Michigan, Michigan State. I don't think it's going to be much of a game, but whatever, it's on ABC. Uh, we'll talk about that one later on today. Of course, we got some good ones. I, like I said, the game of the day, I don't care who says what, it is number two Ohio State and number 13 Penn State. Penn State, I, there's just a lot of dislike there. I mean, I don't know, Terrence, this is going to be a good game, so we're going to get into that one later on today. 
Uh, but let's go ahead and dip on into some high school, Taryn, and start things off, brother, with that current top 10 in high school. We have North Shore Houston, man, that football factory over there in Texas. Well, good sir, last night, Taryn, what a game, man. They uh, barely, barely beat, and I'm going to butcher the name, but Atascosia, I believe is how you pronounce it, the Atascosia Eagles. Out of Humble, Texas, Taryn, this was a close one, brother. I know, I know you got more for us right now, but 16-13 to 13 final score. How about that one, Taryn? Yeah, no, it's cool. basically when they grind out in the uh, fourth quarter, they basically need to come up big just because out of Scotia, they really trusted them in that first half. They were up 13-3 at one point, and then North Shore basically had to turn on the gas, and it's courtesy of... David Amat yeah. Amador missed the touchdown pass to Terrence Yuri the second. So, and then eventually the North Shore defense had to come up big as basically it, they needed to like stop the run game and they came up big in the red zone. So, overall, North Shore really proved why they were top 10. It's never really easy to stay undefeated, especially when. There are a lot of good teams out there, especially when it comes to like Texas. There are really a lot of good teams from that Texas area. Absolutely, Taryn. There certainly are. <clears throat> and well, I'll tell you, Taryn, <clears throat> the one that was crazy for me. This is the this is another top ten. A close one, but it was a little too close. And the Chandler Wolves, Taryn, we've had some NFL stars just like North Shore come out of this school. And last night, it would happen, man. Basha, the Basha Bears coming on over from Chandler. I think it's a rivalry game. Taryn, this one looked close, but it happened, good sir. The 7-1, and one, now 7-1 and one Basha Bears would make Chandler also 7-1, and one, knocking off Chandler 14-7 on the road. Taryn, Chandler lost this game at home. Yeah, well, I'm not surprised. I, I, Basha has, I, I wouldn't say I've seen Basha, but they've come back from, like, worse deficits than this. So this is kind of not overly too terrible for them. So I really, they came up big late in the game. Obviously, this was a classic defensive bloodfest. Both of these teams really were just back and forth, 7-7. Seven, seven. Then with about less than two minutes, you change remaining. They're running that goes in for the touchdown, and they basically just didn't leave Chandler enough time as DJ Jaiman basically intercepted the ball on the 32, and that was pretty much the game right there. So, again, I've seen Barsha come back. They played Los Alamitos in California, and they were down, I think, to 21, and then eventually Barsha just turned the tide on them, and they wound up winning that one, so... This to me is no surprise whatsoever. That's crazy, Taryn. Uh, you got to see them even in person. That's pretty cool. You get to see them. That's awesome. Uh, Los Alamitos definitely plays some schools that are <clears throat> pretty dang good. Those Arizona schools are tough, man. <laughs> so we went from Texas to Arizona. Now we're heading on over to Florida, the Sunshine State, Taryn. We're St. Thomas Aquinas. Well, first things first, before we even get there, Taryn, is Chandler in the top 10 next week because of this loss? Yes or no? Probably not. I mean, nothing against Boxer. They're a good team, but unfortunately for Chandler, this was kind of, I mean, it's not a bad loss, per se. Like, Boxer only had one loss going in. However, I just think that they're not going to be in the top 10. Now, if you, if you really lost to a top 10 team, maybe they could possibly be in the top 10, but I just don't see them in the top 10 next week. I feel you. It's so competitive, man. So, <clears throat> next we're going to go on with the Sunshine State. St. Thomas Aquinas, the Raiders. They're better than my Raiders, Terry. <laughs> I'm sorry I had to say it. Yeah, oh, my gosh. The St. Oh, my gosh. That was funny. So, the St. Thomas Aquinas Raiders out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Terry, last night, they would just... Damp their season, man! I love that. Golly, man! Nine. I mean, that's, that's, that's nine games. They will finish off 
Um, with a nice little victory here, man, over Boyd Anderson, 44 to zero. And well, Boyd Anderson, one and eight St. Thomas Aquinas now nine and no, oh, how you like that? Yeah, this one was pretty much over by the first quarter. It was 27 nothing after the first quarter and then 35 nothing at half time. And I imagine there was a running clock. So. Basically, they called off the dogs, and I imagine it wasn't like they didn't want to like run the score up or risk the players getting hurt. So, yeah, this is kind of expected. I feel bad to Boyd Anderson, but the thing was, you're playing the national rank top 10 team. You got to be ready for that matchup. Okay? Truth, exactly. Truth, good sir. Truth. So, Moving forward, Aaron, <clears throat> that was number eight in the country right now. Currently, number seven, we're going to stay in Florida, Hollywood, Florida, to be precise. As looks like on Thursday, the Shamanah Madonna Lions will just, they'll, yeah, they, <laughs> they're going to add to the blowouts that I'm sure we're going to see. They will knock off St. John Paul II Academy Eagles out of Boca Raton, Florida, and... Well, they will fall to three and seven. Uh, yeah, this team, man, Shaman Madonna will go to eight and zero, oh, sixty-three to zero. Terry, another blowout. Yeah, just like the previous one, this one was pretty much over by the fifth quarter. It was twenty-eight <laughs> nothing after the first quarter. Oh no! And you're starting to see a little bit of a theme. You're starting to see why he he's their top ten already in the top ten and. Again, nothing personal, but I just think that the other team, they just did not have a chance. They did not. They they did not, Darren. By the way, Adam says here in the chat room, it's not a show until Larry bashes the Raiders. <laughs> I'm sorry, Darren. I just, yeah, we, we beat the Texans this week, but I'm, whatever. You know, we could have won other games the same exact way. Let Jacobs run the ball. Anyway, with that said, on over now to the number six team in the country. We're going over to Georgia. We've gone south. Now we're going north of Florida to Georgia. Buford, Georgia to be exact. That number six team is holding down that number six uh, spot pretty darn good here. The Buford Wolves. Darren, man, this team last night got off. They destroyed Mountain View, man. They were on the road. Knocked off Mountain View 56 to 7, my God. Gosh, um, Mountain View will drop to five and four on the season, but Buford a perfect nine and oh, how you like that one? So this one wasn't as over as it was in the first quarter of, of the <laughs> previous two games, but it was over by halftime, forty two seven. I give credit to Mountain View; they did score a touchdown, and they beat, and it wasn't like overly ugly. But it was fairly ugly. So, either way, Buford basically, they, they told themselves why they're in the top 10. And when you're winning by that much, you're not going to be leaving anytime soon. And this isn't a, a bad team. Like, not really is a solid team. Like, they're 500. Now, if they had lost, if they had beaten some other team, like a winless team, and gave up the touchdown, it would probably be because. You had your reserves, and it was, that was like a second half touchdown. But either way, that's basically what I got. You said they did not, they didn't hold back. They did not. <clears throat> Buford, man, very good football school. I'm a, uh, well, they're 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 a solid school, man. This team is. Uh, we've seen them. We've been we've been doing the show for a couple of years now, Taryn, and man, we've we've seen Buford around the top ten like a lot. So solid stuff here. Next up, we're headed over from Georgia all the way to Las Vegas to not talk about the Raiders. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, but the high school football playoffs did begin last week in Vegas. Or I don't know if it's the whole state of Nevada. I mean, I'm sure. Duh. But Las Vegas, man. Bishop Gorman. They will finish the season at nine and one, only loss of the year coming to from modern day, 
they've uh, actually invited Modern Day over to play, and well, it was a good game. Modern Day was on the ropes. We talked about this one weeks ago, Taryn, a long, long, long time ago. But of course, they would lose 24 to 21. Bishop Gorman, though, once again, the only school they would lose to, and well, they would move on to the to uh, the playoffs after a dominating. 75 to 0 victory over Henderson last week. Last night, looks like it's called the NIAA playoffs, uh, football playoffs. Taryn, they will play, or they would play Faith Lutheran. Yeah, it looks like it was on the road, as a matter of fact. Uh, maybe not, I don't know. But all I do know it is. Home. Oh, it was home. Okay, well, Taryn. How is this for a first round? <laughs> 72 to 0. And it looks like they are going to be at a neutral site coming up next week, taking on Desert Pines. Not to jump ahead, they're 8 and 2, but Taryn, my gosh, 72 to 0. I mean, if there's ever a way to start off the first round or start off the playoffs, that's how you do it. So, for Bishop Gorman, this is kind of not surprising because they actually have not one, not two, not three, but Seven shutouts on the season. Ever since they beat St. Louis of Hawaii for Honolulu, they basically picked, they've only given up 10 points, and that 10 points was to the board of Melville, Georgia. But this is Roman, they really need business when it comes to their defense. And shutting out, like, this is a sixth straight opponent, and they're seven out of the last eight that they shut out. So, I'm not overly surprised to see Bishop Gorman starting out an opponent, but this is basically the team that nearly beat Modern Day, and they held them to 24 points. Like, Modern Day is, should be averaging somewhere in like the 30, but I don't know that number off the top of my head. But that team, Gorman, yeah, this is kind of, it should be their championship to lose at this point, unless someone knocks them off. Agreed, Taryn. Now we're going to number four. We're going, we're going more west. We, we went from Georgia all the way out west to Las Vegas. Now we're heading on over to Bellflower, a place that you and I don't live too far away from. And Bellflower, California, you know who it is, the St. John Bosco Braves, currently number four in the country. They were number one until on Marday knocked them off. And, man, St. John Bosco, they will uh, stamp their season last night with a freakish victory, 56-14 to 14 over Santa Margarita. Santa Margarita, Santa, Mar- Santa Margarita will finish 6-4. and St. Bosco finishes 9-1 and one with their only loss coming to guess who from <laughs> Modern Day Monarchs. We talked about that game a couple weeks ago as well. Number one versus number two. Modern Day got the better of them. They won that. Modern Day won that one 17-7. And, well, hey, St. John Bosco dropped a little bit, but they're still there. So, yeah, you know, modern day, doing their thing, playing top ten teams in the country, and, well, and they, as they should, getting challenged, iron sharpens iron, and, well, you know, that's how that goes, Taryn. So, yeah, St. John Bosco obliterates Santa Margarita last night at home. Yeah, this wasn't too surprising, if you ask me. And, honestly, what really hurt modern, or Santa Margarita is obviously playing this opponent, but... Obviously, they played modern day and got the break beaten off them, but I was a little surprised in Santa Margarita because here's the thing. That loss obviously was expected, but that loss also hurt them in the fact that they finished tied for third with Jay Sarah and Orange Lutheran because Jay Sarah beat Orange Lutheran 20 to 7 last night, which was probably a, an upset in my opinion. So here's, I'll be a year away from Santa Margarita Boston, but here's how the Trinity League finished. Modern day, obviously, for Bosco second, Jaycer Olu and Santa Maria tied for third. Jaycer actually won the coin flip to be the third place representative, so I imagine it's going to automatically qualify for the playoffs, but it's just going to be a matter of what division they're going to be in. So that third through fifth was really, really all over the place. And other than that, um, Bosco, I, they're going to be very interesting going into the playoffs. I really want it. I really am interested to see what they can do come past them. You and me both, Aaron. Well, now we're going to go from Bellflower, clearly across the country, all the way to Miami, Florida, man. The Central Rockets, currently number three in the nation, and they will get themselves last week, or sorry, yesterday, a nice, gigantic victory. My gosh, 50-14 to 14 at home. 
last night versus Monsignor Pace, I believe. Monsignor, Monsignor Pace. Uh, hopefully I'm not butchering that. The Spartans. And, well, they will win that one. Uh, they'll, they'll drop to 4-5. and five. Monsignor Pace, that is. Central jumps to 9-0 and on the season. And they're looking good over there in Florida, Taryn. Yeah, it was the, this was basically their thing from the get go. It wasn't like the most blowouty thing it was, but Central really asserted themselves for the most part. They just did not fail at one day. I will give credit to the other team, Southern Pace. They were, or, I'm sorry, not Southern Pace, Montsevier Pace. They put up 14 points and they did come in 4 and 4 on the year. Obviously, it's kind of uh, hovering around 500. But the fact that they put up 40 points, obviously, they had a set first half set down. I think they put the second half half down and like started time when the dogs just fall off. But I think it's just all I, I give them a deeper effort with that one. But Central is the two good. They're the number two team in AC for a reason. Absolutely, man. Solid school and Central doing their thing. Now we're going up north to Baltimore, Maryland, at a school that is just very odd for me, Taryn. I really got to we got to find out how this works. But the St. Francis or St. Francis Academy Panthers out of Baltimore, Maryland, they're six and zero. They don't have a region, I guess. I'm looking here on Max Preps. I don't see anything. They play. They played, and we were just puzzled. I believe I was puzzled by this. They play up until the end of September. Then they don't have a game basically for an entire month, and then they played last night versus Arundel, where they won fifty to zero, uh, going six and zero on the on the, on the uh, sorry six and zero on the season, and then they will drop Arundel to seven and two. Well, they're going to play next weekend, the weekend after that, and the weekend after that before Thanksgiving. They're going to finish off with the IMG Academy there, but. Yeah, this is puzzling me, because I don't really see playoffs. Usually that's when playoffs are going on. I have no idea how Baltimore's high school system works. I don't know. But what I do know is, and it says here that they're in the MIAA Freelance. Not even sure what that is. If that's like a high school independent, uh, equivalent to an independent. I don't know what that is. But what I do know is they beat the brakes, as you said, to use your words, off of Arundel last night, man. 50-0, to zero, just total beat down. And, well, they'll win that one and look pretty good at number two in the country. Yeah, the first shutout of the uh, season, and apparently there was over 5,000 fans in attendance, which is quite nice. So, yeah, kind of, it's impressive for St. Francis Academy. I imagine they're just freelancing, and I don't, I don't know why they're freelancing, and I guess maybe Baltimore does allow teams to freelance, just so maybe they were in a league and then they just dominated game after the game where everyone said, nope, you're too good, get out of here. Which <laughs> California could probably do, but you have to realize that school districts are saying, so I imagine maybe St. Francis has that, doesn't have that problem. But we'll, like, it is what it is, so this one was pretty much over by halftime, so yeah, <laughs> big up. congrats to St. Francis on their first shutout of the season, and I wonder if we'll ever get to see California freelance teams. I understand there are some freelance teams, and but that then now would have to open the door to being like at large, which could be a little dicey. So we shall see, man. That's freelance, we got to talk about that one. That's crazy. So. With that said, Taryn, the number one team in the land we've been talking about. We talked about them twice already because they played both. Bishop Gorman and St. John Bosco. The Modern Day Monarchs, right there in your neck of the woods, Aaron, not too far from you in Santa Ana. They will just eat Servite for breakfast, and it was dinner time. <laughs> um, they had Brenner. <laughs> I've heard that before. Uh, breakfast for dinner. And, well, they would just, just end off a horrible year for Servite. Not used to seeing them this bad. They were one in nine. Tough season for Servite. For the Friars, but Monarchs, man, the the, the modern day Monarchs, forty eight to seventeen. Yeah, how about that one, Taryn, for the number one team in the land? Yeah, this wasn't surprising. Remember, Survey lost so much to graduation last year, and this was a rematch of last year's championship. And obviously, modern day was not going to have any of it. And here's the thing for Survey. they're one and nine. They hit season one and nine. The regular season one and nine. But something you gotta 
you might be shocked about is that they still might make the playoffs with one win. Their only win was against La Mirada, 10 7. <laughs> they still could make the playoffs. Because you got to remember the Cal Press and the whole new CIS infection system is rewarding teams based off of tough strength of schedules. And I don't necessarily agree with this. I feel, I don't know if Servite deserves to be in the playoffs. Nothing against them, but one in nine, at least if they had won a league game, I'd make the argument for them. But it's like, I, I can't. I can't know that. I'm sorry, but I just can't make that argument for them. And they're projected to be in Division 4, and it's going to get so much easier for them if they make the playoffs. And I don't want that to happen. If anything, they could be like the low seed in Division 3, but they're projected to be in Division 4. If they're in Division 4, then that could be dicey for all those other teams that are not, they don't have, that do not have like the athletes that Servite has. You know? Darren, that reminds me of something that, well, we just had the conversation a couple days ago, my buddy Alex and I. So, long story, I'm going to try to make this short. It's not going to be that short, but, eh, whatever, we got some time. So, Darren, last year, you and I talked a lot about, uh, at the end of the season, we talked a lot about that Arlington Lions team. Remember the Arlington team last year, Darren, Arlington High School? Uh-huh. And their craziness. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and second what Taren was what Taren was saying right now about the Friars being 1-9 and, and still making the playoffs. That's kind of crazy. Because last year, and if you forgot, Taryn, I'll go ahead and refresh memory, but my good buddy Alex and I were talking this last past week. He, uh, I guess one of his co-workers' sons is the running back for Hillcrest High School, which is in Riverside, California. And... They were at the game versus Arlington last week, and Hillside beat them 35-8. to And Alex was saying there are people in the stands talking about how Arlington was in state last year. They went to state. They went to state. They were champions. They were champions. They were state. I don't know if they ever said CIF champions, but they were champions. And he was like, how? Like, they're trash. Like, he was saying, I mean, it was nothing, you know, it's nothing against Arlington, of course, his words. But here's the deal, though. Darren, we talked about this last year, and... Mm, I'm not against Arlington High School at all. I'm not against, um, I don't know, I'm not, uh, and and then I think Alex said it best when him and I were talking, I explained this to him, and him and I were talking on the phone, he was like, oh, well, that makes sense. He's like, still, I don't know, I don't think it should have happened. He's like, but, basically, Arlington did, they did their thing. Like, they did their best with, like, the hand they were dealt, basically, and they performed in that system. To the T, basically. And yeah, he's absolutely right. Um, but really quick last year, you guys. The Arlington, Arlington Lions, last year. Uh, and since then, I've been having this conversation a lot all week with some different <laughs> colleagues and different people. And my barber even a little bit ago when I went and got my hair cut. But kind of crazy. But, Darren, last year, the Arlington Lions went 0-7 to start the season. They, they beat Hillcrest... Uh, ten to zero, I think. And then they beat La Sierra like pretty big. Then they lost to Patriot High School out of Harupa Valley. Taryn, they finished the regular season at two and eight. Okay, that's not a winning record. It's two and eight. Well, what happens? Of course, our committee over here, CIF in California, as they call it. Um, Taryn, <laughs> the top three of the league go. Notre Vista, of course, Novi out of Riverside, California. They won it last year, I think. Uh, yeah, they won it. Then Ramona High School, my wife's old high school. Um, they've gotten very good over the years, and they were second place. They actually just celebrated their first, kind of crazy, last night, Taryn, I heard from Pep Fernandez on uh, the Inland, uh, Inland Sports Show here in the IE. I just heard that they just won their first sole title, Ramona High School, since, like, the freaking eighties, I think. Crazy, right? They're not sharing it with nobody. They won it all by themselves and they're the standalone champion. Awesome job to Ramona, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> awesome job to the Ramona Rams, man. Sporting those uh, North Carolina colors over there. So congratulations to Ramona. Just gotta give them some props. But Taryn, last year, Novi, the Notre Vista Braves. Okay, Notre Vista wins it. They go division six in the playoffs. I guess earlier heard from Pep that they basically do it and I didn't know this, you probably did for sure but they place you in divisions after the seasons, I, the season I guess but I guess you're quote, yeah. quote I guess you're quote unquote that division before 
or like I guess the next season you're considered that division or whatever. But you really don't get a division until the playoffs. They try to match you up in the bracket with teams that are like you and whatever, and that's the playoffs. Okay, whatever. Anyway, so you know that's how we get like the the division one, two, three, four, five, six. So we go all the way to thirteen here in Southern California in the CIF Southern section and all that or CIF. So anyway, Aaron Arlington goes two and eight. Novi goes. They they went five and zero oh in league. Uh, the Ramona, Ramona goes four and one. They both go to the playoffs, of course. Notre Vista goes to uh, Division six. They lost in the first round. Ramona goes Division eight. They lost in the first round. Arlington just happens to get in <laughs> because they went two and three in league. La Sierra and Patriot both went two and three. But somehow they, uh, I mean, Arlington did beat La Sierra. They lost the Patriot, but I guess they held a tiebreaker over them somehow. And guess what? I can probably answer that one. I think it's based off of coin flip. Do you remember how a little while ago I said Jay Sarah, Olu, and Santa Maria all tied for third in the Finney League? And yeah. And Jay Sarah won that coin flip? Yeah. That was the same case for Arlington. Okay, well, there that that explains everything. But ten, did they not make the most of it? My gosh, Arlington, dude, Arlington gets into the freaking playoffs in Division Thirteen. Okay, that's that's no no not talking crap. Of course, it's, you know, unfortunately, the lowest of the playoff bracket in the Southern Section, Division Four uh, Thirteen. Then I think you have like Division One Double A and Triple A. The thing is, it looks like the smaller smaller schools, the private schools or whatever, like some of those. But anyway. Regardless, there's like one A, one single A and double A, whatever. But anyway, Taryn, freaking Arlington gets into the to CIF and they run the table, dude. They went four and zero. Oh. They, I think they played at Ramona High School because they use their field, um, from what I understand. But dude, they freaking won. They went undefeated, four and zero oh, in the playoffs, and they won a. Freaking banner! They went two in eight in the regular season. Apparently, there you go, Taryn. They went from a coin flip, and um, I guess, and they went freaking two and eight in the gosh dang regular season. They somehow got in the playoffs. They win four games straight in CIF. They win a CIF banner, a Division Thirteen banner. Taryn, they get selected. Well, they go into state the six A bracket. Because there is one through seven double A and one through seven single A, and then you have the open division, which is like the big monsters, like Modern Day. Like last year, Modern Day knocked off Sarah, which is Tom Brady's old high school, and Modern Day beat them and became the national champions after that. But Taryn Arlington ran the table in CIF. I know I keep repeating myself. I'm sorry. They win this thing, then they go to state. Taryn, they go in their four team bracket. It's two Southern California teams versus uh, and two Northern California teams. Um, the two northern play, the two southern play, and then, well, you get a northern versus southern, and that's how you get a, a state champion, depending on one through seven double A or one through seven single A or open division. Taryn, what the crap, brother? What the crap? They freaking beat Woodland Hills, or a team out of Woodland Hills, in the first round, Taryn. Then they go all the way to the state championship for 6A. They go up north, and they lost to a prep school. Forgive me for forgetting their name, but they lose to a school in Richmond where that school will win the state title, okay? And I will find the name right now because I feel very disrespectful right now not saying their name. But, Taryn, I mean, what in the crap was that? Like, Arlington, that's insane. To me, that is absolutely insane how a 2-8, I'm not hating but a two and eight football team got in in the first place. But I get it because of league three and two and three they went. But yeah, Taryn, this is crazy, man. They went okay. So let's just go over this real quick. They lost. They went zero and seven. They beat Hillcrest finally in week eight. They win a game. Okay, ten to zero. Then they beat La Sierra fifty seven to thirteen. Then they lose to Patriot seventeen to fourteen. There's a three way tie two to three or two and three between Patriot La Sierra. Oh no, Patriot Hillcrest. And Arlington. Taryn, apparently they had a coin flip. Cool, that settles that for me. Then they beat Cerritos 22-20. They beat uh, Heritage Christian out of Northridge 
35 to 24. They beat Anaheim 38 to 16. And then in the championship game, the CAF championship game, they freaking beat Montclair 23 to 0 and they win. Then they go to the state bracket. They beat El Camino out of Woodland, El Camino Real out of Woodland Hills 24 to 14. And they go all the way up north to the state championship 6A game, Taryn, and they lost to Celsian College Preparatory, uh, Preparatory Pride. That's their mascot, I guess. Uh, Celsian College Preparatory out of Richmond, California. They lost. Uh, forty-two to twenty-one. Okay, they went seven to nine. Final score. It's like a freaking college score, a college or NFL record right there, basically. And it all came from finishing third place in the River Valley. Apparently now because of a coin flip. And there you have it. Okay, it's insane, Taryn. It blows my mind. I mean, unfortunately, this year for the for the uh, Lions out of Arlington, they went three and seven. Looks like they just finished up last night with a nice victory over La Sierra, 54-18. to 18. I don't know if they're going to the playoffs this year. Um, but, Taryn, dude, I mean, ah! It, it's just kind of unsettling, like like how you said it, like with with uh, Servite. It just kind of doesn't sit right. You know what I mean? Like, it kind of doesn't, like, a 2-8 and eight football team, and then they run the table, which is good for them, but the same thing with the Friars. Watch the Friars go 1-9, and nine, but they win a... I mean, they'll probably be in the open, so they're probably not going to win. But if they, in case they did, Darren, I'm going to say, once again, it's a crazy debate. I know that took like freaking 10 minutes to explain. Our listeners are probably like, okay, that was an adventure, or, you know. But, dude, give me your thoughts on all this. Come on. Okay, so basically, I'm going to one-up you. So, Arlington at least made the top three, or fifth in the top three, technically. Oh, the team I covered last year, Newport Harbor, they came three and seven. Outside of the top three in the league, and then they got an at large spot into the playoffs. It was a 3 2 in Division 6. They crushed their first hit on Sunny Hills in Santa Barbara. They nearly won against Dominguez Hills. And then I think you know this one. The, they came back from 21 points down to beat Semecio Valley in the finals at Semecio Valley. So they went from 3 and 7 to 7 and 7. And then, obviously, they got beaten by Aquinas in the SoCal Regionals, SoCal Regional Finals, a.k.a. the State Playoffs Round 1. So, yeah, here's the thing. So, I can't justify since they didn't win a league game. Newport Harbor at least won league games against Huntington Beach and Fountain Valley. Albeit, none of those wins would stand out again. They did play a tough schedule, but it's like, uh, I don't know. And then, Serva sort of like obviously played the tough schedule. I don't know how tough Arlington's schedule was, but uh, it's very, it's very tough, like, to put it in the words. Like, if your team wins at least up one losing, then your team should be, your team should have at least a chance. Oh, but if your team is like winless and losing, you've got one win to your name. I don't know. I just it's so tough to make an argument for that. You know what? That makes sense. I did not know. I know we talked about that yesterday, last week. Uh, sorry, last year we talked about that, of course. Your Sailors beating Temecula Valley, which is literally right down the street from us right here, Taryn and Marietta. Um, TVHS. I mean, I grew up knowing them, you know, that school. They're a pretty solid football team. And, yeah, you went and beat them last year. They're, your Sailors did of Newport Harbor. I did not know they were 3-7. and seven. That's that's crazy. They only, only won one league game. Uh, two league games. Oh, okay. Valley and well, that's the same thing then, I guess, with Arlington. But anyway, I guess crazier things have happened. There you go, Terry. And that was also last year. So, I don't know, Terry. I mean, should it be the third team was allowed to go? I mean, Terry, what do you think? I mean, be honest, man. What do you really think? Uh, here's the thing. 500 or better should give you a good chance. And I think it, it helps us to... 500 teams or better at, at large, they get first priority, and then it goes like to the, all the other at large. But it's just it's so bothersome when it comes to like some of these sub 500 teams that finish outside of their required league, their required league uh, requisite, and they basically just get invited and they run the table. Like it's still like played in divisions before. They could possibly run the table in that division and win CIS. That would be no bueno for all those teams that work hard in the league 
and then work hard throughout the entire season or the season lose to a team that should be in like Division 1 or 2, but in reality, they play a 1-9 and nine schedule with like a lot of tough teams, and they basically, unfortunately, fell right into the lack of Division 4. So, I really have mixed feelings about this, and it's just the biggest debate in the world. Like, should they, like, outlaw teams that that are under 500 and finish outside their league directly with it. Like, or maybe they need to, like, have some sort of, like, I don't know, if you can't win with some league or with one win in your league, you're basically not in if you don't have a 500 or better record. I understand that you don't want to, like, put teams that, like, play easy schedules in only for them to get last. But it's, like, it's so bothersome. It's so tricky because you don't want to like hurt anyone for playing a tough schedule. But at the same time, you don't want to reward like one or zero win teams. There have there was a case where there was a one in one in nine team that made the playoffs as an at large, and then there was another case where a team won went zero and ten, but. I think that they forfeit one of their league games because of an eligible player, and then they got to make the pass as an at large. So, yeah, it's basically my little story right there of lots of history. In terms of like the CIS 7 I am with you. Sorry about that. My kitty blue in the background is trying to make her appearance here on three and out college edition. So, but absolutely there, Terry. Um, yeah, dude, I totally, totally agree. That, it's crazy, man. It's a double egg sword for sure. It's, it's a trip, man. But I don't even know that's the right name for it. But craziness there in high school. Sorry, we went a little deep there, guys. But man, that's a good debate. It's a good topic. Maybe that exists around the country. I don't know. But definitely some great stuff. So, Terry, last week in the 3C2A, dude. Oh, wait, wait. It was a good week, man. We had, I mean, my gosh, this was crazy. The rankings, uh, just, just absolutely bonkers, man. <laughs> seven and zero, Riverside now currently all alone at the top. Seven and zero. I mean, we can't, we just can't go any further without talking about this game. It all came down to an amazing football game. It went into like double overtime or triple overtime. No, triple overtime, where they started having to go for two. Term the Riverside Tigers. At Ramona High School, wouldn't you know? Because we're going to in Riverside today, dude. Apparently, but um, Riverside High School. I mean, at Ramona High School, because uh, they're getting. Their, I think Riverside's getting their field redone. But dude, Riverside, thirty-five to thirty-three, they win this thing. It came down to a two-point conversion attempt for the Mounties that just went wrong. The Tigers will win this thing, thirty-five to thirty-three. I saw it on uh, the YouTube channel on the on their on their link for Riverside, and. Um, Taryn, uh, I heard Coach Kraft at the end talking about there was a lot of guys who were hurt, but a lot of guys filled in to play this, and they played very, very, very well. I mean, how about that, Taryn? I mean, a lot of fill-ins made this thing happen, too. I don't know how many were talking, but regardless, it's a rivalry game, dude. When I played Riverside, it was a rivalry game. It was always a rivalry game. We want to play this team as hard as you possibly can because it's a freaking rivalry. I mean, that's all there is to it. It's a nasty game. It's a fun game. And San Antonio, man, the Mounties of Mount Sa- of Mount Sac came in at 6-0. and Both these teams were 6-0, and and it was just a hell of a game. Riverside wins this thing 35-33. to They said on the final play, uh, final play was just defense doing their thing, and I think uh, the quarterback dropped back. We saw the defender in his face when the D-lineman threw the ball. It was incomplete, I believe. I don't know if it bounced off anybody. I can't remember right now. It was faint, but I just remember celebrating because it was just a great, great, great game. I saw the replay because remember you you actually texted to, or tweeted to me that they survived. I was like, oh crap, I forgot about that game. And I looked and I saw the YouTube link and I clicked it or I saw the live link. I, I rewind I rewind it. And I think I sent you the video too, and I was like fast forward to like one hour or something, whatever. But I don't know if you got to see it. But Taryn, it was crazy. Freaking Riverside, man, seven and zero, the only undefeated team atop of the three C two A going in to next week. Just what a game, right, Taryn? What a way for Riverside to win this thing, man. Yeah, we were quite all over the place. I'm just cursing out the fact though. They came alive in the second quarter, and also came alive in the fourth quarter. Seems like Riverside was kind of the off and on switch in the first, 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 fourth quarter. First quarter, they were on it. Second quarter, a little off. Third quarter, on it. Fourth quarter, a little off. And then 
obviously the overtime basically had, the overtime is basically set it for themselves and it is a great battle. I would not be surprised if these two clashed in the Southern California regional. Well, Darren, it's very possible. These two teams, two teams in the South, I mean, this is a very, very good chance they will meet again. And man, what a game that was. Also, another good game. Butte and uh, up north, actually. American River knocked off Butte. American River is looking pretty good, man. They won 27 to 25. Another two point victory there. Didn't go into overtime, but good game for those guys of American River last week. Um, Taryn, I. My heart aches for those Pirates, man. They had this game versus Glendale, it seems. They, they were there. A fourth quarter collapse kind of just destroyed them, though. Glendale, man. I remember playing Glendale, too. They're a tough school. Um, look a lot like the USC Trojans. They look pretty cool. The colors are cool. But Orange Coast, man, looks like it was at home as well. They'll drop to 1-6. Glendale to 4-3 and three after that 38-28 to, 20, 38 to 28 battle, or, or 20. Uh, 38 to 28 victory for Glendale over Orange Coast. Then we have Laney, the champions from a couple of years ago, beating the champions from last year up north. Laney College, they were the last chance, they were the last football, last chance U team uh, to be observed. And they will beat City College of San Francisco. 31 to 20. Laney to 5 and 2. Frisco, San Francisco will fall to 4 and 3. Great stuff there for those guys. I mean, Terry, because there was all kinds of great football last week, man. We are getting to the nitty gritty right now. We are getting some great games. East Los Angeles knocks off Long Beach twenty to fourteen. East Los Angeles, dude, they went to five and three. They were also a last chance. You get the basketball team though, but Long Beach will fall to four and four. Fullerton just eight. Southwestern alive, man. Southwestern was a lot better than this back in the day when I used to play them. But Fullerton, though, of course, really good when we used to play them, but. Florida now 6-1, Southwestern out of Chula Vista, San Diego. Uh, my gosh, they'll drop to 0-7. Florida 6-1, and like I said, they'll be, well, Florida wins that one at home, 31-0. El Camino and Cerritos had quite the game. Those are two blue schools. Uh, I love Cerritos filled that big old eagle in the middle. The big old falcon in the middle looks pretty cool. Uh, but, dude, what a game. Elko. Fresh off a loss from Mount Sac last week, and they will head on. They will play at home in Murdoch Stadium. Uh, fun fact: Murdoch Stadium is where the longest yard was actually played in in that stadium. That last game versus the the guards and the and the convicts. Uh, they filmed it there, from what I understand. So pretty cool. But uh, yeah, man, Cerritos will beat El Camino twenty two to twenty. Going west, we had an Orange County battle here, and you know what, Darren? It was a pretty good one. Orange County battle, Golden West six and they were uh, five and one. Saddleback was one and five, and you know what? I get it. The score is a little lopsided, but man, these defenses were balling, man. Uh, or their offenses were just really bad. I don't know, but Golden West will win this thing twenty-one to six on the road. And let's just see if we can get one more here. Uh, wow, West Hills Kalinga gets destroys Cabrillo, thirty. Eight to zero. So anyway, Darren, um, this is a lot of great games. But I can go on for days with all this stuff. But Darren, how about this, man? Besides that crazy Riverside Mount Sac game, any other games pop out to you from last week? No, but I would like to wonder. But I would like to ask this: in this rankings, why is Mount San Antonio underneath Golden West? Why? Why, why did they get two points when they played Riverside pretty close? Where Golden West kind of, I don't think it's a tough of break seat Nelson, but they just got beaten by more. So it kind of really makes me stretch my head of why Mount San Antonio is underneath Golden West in the ranking this week when they put Riverside close. So, and both of those teams have Riverside as their only losses. So it's kind of a little bit of a food for thought process, but it's also a case of. Mount Sac should be rewarded for playing Riverside closer than Golden West. That's kind of... We'll have to do the schedule, schedule then. Sorry. 
No, 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 Darren. No, that, that's kind of annoying. I, I, I did not see that. I didn't realize that. <laughs> but it is true. So as of right now, yeah, that top ten right now, man, looks pretty good. We got a tie for nine. Palomar and Diablo Valley both at five and two. Lainey at five and two. Sarah six and one. Fullerton six and one. Cerrito six and one. College of San Mateo six and one. Mount San Antonio six and one. Golden West is six and one. Riverside is seven and zero. Oh. So <clears throat> that'll do it for those rankings. So this week, of course, Riverside will be hosting El Camino. In just a few hours at noon. Um, I, I'm, I don't know. I want this to be a close game. It is always a rivalry, but I don't know. Eh, kind of crazy, but it should be a good game there. Uh, let's see here. Golden West will be heading on over to San Bernardino Valley. I don't know why there was a forfeit last week, but San Bernardino did have to forfeit that game. Um, not quite sure what that was all about, uh, but I did see it on here on the website. <coughs> it says here that uh, San Diego Mesa. SBBC forfeited, and San Diego Mesa got the victory, so I don't know what happened there. Hopefully everything's okay, but Sam, it looks like SBBC is back in action today as they will host Golden West. Um, Desert, COD, taking on Mount San Jacinto is the homecoming game for Mount San Jack. Coming up today, just down the freeway from us here in Marietta, <coughs> they'll play, they play in Menifee. Sirius and Palomar played at Escondido High School. Should be a pretty good game there as well. Orange Coast and Santa Ana. Taryn, if you guys ever had a chance to win a game, <laughs> I'm going to say this is the one, man. That should be a good game. There's no diss on Santa Ana, but I'm going to say, I don't know. Orange Coast is motivated right now, man. They, they got to win something, bro. They got to win something. The season's almost over. I mean, got to win something. Playoffs aren't in sight. They got to win something. So, anyway, Bakersfield and Long Beach going head-to-head -to -head today should be a very good game. Mount San Antonio and Chafee going head-to-head -head as well. Allen Hancock and Ventura, Saddleback and Southwestern. I also San Diego Mesa and Fullerton at Fullerton District Stadium. So there's some good games going on today, Taryn. Which one of those caught your eye? So you mentioned Orange Coast Santa Ana. That's actually a rivalry game. And they actually play for the, uh, I forget what the flag is like, but it's like the rivalry flag. And it's basically half Santa Ana, the other half being Orange Coast. And I think last I checked, Santa Ana won the previous matches against OCC. So, this year, OCC is going to come out swinging. This time we guys come out hot off the gate, and you mentioned last week that the fourth quarter was what the and then they were in that game through all four quarters, for all three quarters. It's just that the fourth quarter was kind of what they kind of just slipped up in the fourth quarter. Well, Taryn, there were some great... Great games last week. We got some great games coming up today. We shall see how that goes. But let's fast forward on over now to the NJCAA. We're still in junior college. And Taryn, my goodness, congratulations, man. How about this game just last week? My gosh, man. The Mississippi, well, Mississippi Gulf Coast. Well, congratulations to them. This is the third or fourth division title in a row. They will knock off Jones. Jones was coming to town to win this thing. Looks like they were going to probably wrap up the title. Eight and one is what they would leave as. Jones College, man. It was a great, looks like it was a pretty good game. Somewhat, but dude, Mississippi Gulf Coast was not playing around. They actually won the title not too long ago. I think a couple years ago, right, Taryn? We covered that. Uh, Mississippi Gulf Coast will win it, but six and three on the season. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if Jones is undefeated or not. As long as they didn't leave that throw with a victory, and they didn't. 38 to 24 later, Mississippi Gulf Coast will knock off undefeated Jones. That that that's just huge, Taryn. That's huge. I mean, Jones was number four in the country. Uh, Mississippi Gulf Coast was. Not even in the top 10. <laughs> oh, they have the top 15 here. Uh, that is. But, dude, I mean, wow. How about that, Darren? I mean, really, man. How about that? That's great victory for those guys uh, at Jones. I mean, sorry, at uh, Mississippi Gulf Coast. And just a, a solid side. I put that up on our, on our social media as well. Solid stuff there for those guys. And next up. Uh, well, it looks like we had a couple of good games here. East Mississippi, another last chance U team, 63-14 to 14 of Mississippi Delta. Also that same exact day. And, well, yeah, also Copia Lincoln uh, will defeat Hines 28-21 to 21 in that game. Well, uh, well, yesterday. And then, of course, yeah, this just craziness this last past week. Last weekend, uh, there were some really good games, but it comes like the top 10 Teams Hutchinson just 
obliterating Garden City, going seven and zero. They are the number one team in the land, sixty five to seven in that game. And just going off of this, I mean, Iowa Western also a team that is well the number two team in the land. Uh, I think it's the Reavers. I forgot how to say their actual name, but they're seven and zero now as well. They defeated Butler thirty three to fourteen. So. Just overall great stuff there for the NJCAA last week, man. But just congratulations once again to Mississippi uh, Gulf Coast. Awesome job for them. So, yeah, Taryn, any standouts from you last week for the NJCAA? Here's the thing for Mississippi Gulf Coast. They stood out with what – it's not how – it's not them beating Jones is what gets me. It's how they beat Jones. They – Elected for 21 unanswered points in that third quarter, and that was the spark that they needed. And they also shut out Jones in the second half. That is it's downright impressive for them to do that. And I really think this you now burns the question: Does Mississippi both just deserve to be ranked? And where, how far does Jones fall in terms of the? the top 15. That's basically the million dollar question. But they get Gulf Coast, eh, I don't know if they get into the top 10. They've got, they are receiving votes. They received votes in their last previous poll, but does that kind of put them past Tyler or East Mississippi or Iowa Central? It's, it's basically up in the air. Like the committee has a tough decision for the next closest poll. Agreed, sir. And we have here the current top ten: Butler at five and three, Coffeeville at five and two, Georgia Military six and one, Trinity Valley at six and one, Snow out of six and two, and then we have here in the top five the defending champions: New Mexico Military at seven and one, Jones. Well, they were eight and zero, but now they're eight and one. Northwest Mississippi at eight and zero, and, and uh, Iowa Western at seven and zero, and Hutchinson at seven and zero. So. This week, Taryn, we definitely got ourselves some good ones. Like I said, we are, uh, I'm pretty excited. Iowa Western and Iowa Central going head-to-head. Uh, Hutchinson and Highland going head-to-head. I mean, we have some good games today, but those are definitely the ones to watch out for. Uh, Snow and Community Christian out of Michigan. Uh, just, just, you know, some, some pretty solid football games going on today. Also, New Mexico Military and Trinity Valley is homecoming for Trinity Valley. So, uh, some good stuff coming up for today's games in the NJCAA. Any, any of them you're keeping your eye out for today, Taryn? I'm really interested to see uh, the team uh, like in the bottom, like 11 to 15, on how they're going to do. Like, Cobra versus Tyler, that could be an interesting Matches. I'm probably going to watch out for that one as well. But, yeah, but also I'll watch out for Hutchinson as well. Like, I'm not sure if they are truly the real deal, but I me, mean, Tyler is probably the one I'm watching out for. Yeah, you, you and me both, good sir. You and me both. So, looks like uh, we'll move on to the NAIA, man. It's courtesy, courtesy of NAIA.com. Of course, here we got Morningside. Well, the current top t- uh, current top ten right now in the NAIA, Southwestern Kentucky, looking pretty strong. Take a look here at the overall rankings. Uh, here we go. So they are currently six and one. Reinhardt out of Georgia, champions a couple years back, five and one. Marion, champions a couple years back, at six and one. Benedict out of uh, Kansas, seven and one. Bethel out of Tennessee, eight and zero. Oh. Indiana Westland, 6-1. Northern, or Northwestern, out of Iowa, 6-1. Lindsey Wilson, out of Kentucky, 7-0. We have Grandview, of course, solid organization there. So, solid program at 8-0. And then number one, the champs. I think they they were two-time, if I'm not mistaken, right here on the, the, the uh, back-to-back champs. Morningside, if they're not back-to-back, forgive me, but they definitely won it last year, I think. So Morningside at 7-0. Uh, man, we have ourselves some good stuff in the NAIA, and Morningside just having another magical season. I mean, this school, they're solid, Taryn. They're, they're solid. They are such a solid school, and, you know, you got to love how, how hard they play this game. You know, this team is just a solid, solid, solid football team, and... It's really cool to see. You know, it's really, really, really cool to see how far they've come. Like I said, I've had a buddy, um, Randy Madrigal, that played for, for them a couple of years well, when we were in college. And um, 
I don't think they won any titles, but they're still, still a solid program. So last week, speaking of some of those schools, Marion <clears throat> will knock off Concordia, Michigan, 24-7. to 7. Uh, Also, speaking of Morningside, they will knock off Mount Marty, 77-0. to 0. Yeah, that's kind of a <laughs> lopsided affair there, lopsided uh, game. And, you know, I guess, once again, overall, it's great games. Uh, Lindsey Wilson will defeat Cumberland 27-3. to three. So, yeah, Taryn, any games last week that stood out to you from the NAIA? Well, one that stood out to you was Arizona 15 Texas called 81-19. Did they really have to put 81 on the opponent? Dang. I'm baffled by this. I really, really am. But other than that, there was one close game. Point at the point the home team nearly beat Union sixteen to thirteen. That was that's a little bit more of a breath of fresh air in terms of like close games. But uh, and, uh, overall, uh, that game that Arizona Christian won. I understand you want you play to win the game, but the effort on that far. Other than that, the Marion Concordia game stood out to me, and then like I said, Union. Or point three to Union stood out to me. And then Dort narrowly escaped at Concordia of Nebraska. That was also a good one. At least State narrowly at William Penn. So it was some good games last, last week. And, and, you know, the Morningside Matt Mary game obviously was very one sided. Yeah, absolutely, man. So, with that said, guys, I know we're already an hour in, but Taryn and I can take ourselves a quick break. When we get Back in a few minutes, we are going to jump on over to Division 3, Division 2, of course, the FCS, and finish off with that D1 single A. You're listening to 3 Not Calls Edition right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. We'll be right back after this. Some say that Indiana is just a flyover state. Flatlands and cornfields, barns and country roads. What if I told you? Indiana is the crossroads of America. What if I told you, in all other states, basketball is just basketball. In Indiana, basketball is life. Crowded high school basketball gyms on a Friday night, and every barn with a basketball rim and a frayed, worn-out net. If you're interested in the heartbeat of America, and if you're interested in sports, if you have Hoosier running through your veins, the Crossroads Pod with Aaron X is made for you. Powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Each and every week, the Crossroad Pod covers all of Indiana sports. The pride of the horseshoe of the Indianapolis Colts. The blue collar, gold swagger of the Indiana Pacers. The relentless pursuit of a sixth banner for the Indiana Hoosiers. The swing of the hammer of the Purdue Boilermakers. The swoop of the Cardinals of Ball State. The summoning of the echoes of the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. The growl of the Bulldogs of Butler. The intensity of an Indiana fever. The chop of the Indianapolis Indians. At the Crossroads Pod, if it is Indiana, we've got you covered. More than cornfields. More than country back roads. The Crossroads of America. Join me, Aaron X, every week. It's nothing but net. Hello ladies and sinners, hello sports fans around the world, hello IE Sports family. This is Cal Henderson, the host of IE Vegas, the Sin City Sports Show, presented by IE Sports Radio. If you folks are interested in sports in the Vegas area, if you're wanting to have a blast for one hour, every Tuesday night from 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, this is a show built for the Vegas sports fans, where we feature the Las Vegas Raiders, the Las Vegas Golden Knights, the Las Vegas Aces, and the University of 
Las Vegas, Nevada Rebels. Hopefully, fingers crossed, MLB team coming soon. Either way, if you folks are looking to have a blast for one hour each and every week, tune in Tuesday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you folks are interested in Vegas sports news, go to our Twitter, at SinCities underscore IESR, and you can speak with me, the host, Kale Henderson, at Kale underscore Henderson on Twitter. At any time, be happy to reply always willing to reach out to our fans again the sin city sports show presented by ie sports radio your direct feed for all that is sports sports fans do you like teams that are tough cities that are tougher and fan bases that are passionate about their teams how about teams that are historic and stadiums that are iconic? Then you belong in Chicago, and you need to check out Shy town Weekly. Join me, Adam Kernan, every week as we keep up with all things Chicago sports. Bears, Bulls, Blackhawks, Cubs, White Sox. We'll cover them all, plus more. The Windy City is always buzzing. And we'll keep you up on all the big games and major stories. So tune in to Chi Town Weekly every week right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. What's happening, sports fans? Are you a fan of Southern California sports? Are you looking for a show hotter than a hot summer day in California? Then look no further than the SoCal Supreme Sports Show, where I talk about all things Southern California sports. That's right, all sports teams from Southern California. From the hard-hitting tackles of the NFL, to the killer crossovers and big three-pointers of the NBA and WNBA, to the grand slams of the MLB, to the bone-chilling goals of the NHL, and to the booming kicks of the MLS, the SoCal Supreme Sports Show has it all for you. Oh, and let us not forget about the college sports as well. So join me, Taryn Rodriguez, every week here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. That is right, ladies and gentlemen, IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Man, it has been a great show so far. Glad to have you, my boy, Taron Rodriguez, and myself, Larry B. here. I'm bringing you the latest in high school and college football around the country. So, here we are on 3 and Out College Edition, part number two. We got through a ton of high school this morning. Man, that was awesome. Playoffs are getting set, all that fun stuff. We jumped on over to the 3C2A, the NJCAA in college uh, well, junior college, of course, and now, well, I haven't finished up with the NAIA. Now it's time to get over to the NCAA and finish off the show here. So, real quick, Taryn, Division Three, as of right now, looks like we have here, courtesy of D3Football.com, the current top ten, Wisconsin and Whitewater at 5-2, and two, Harden Simmons at 6-1, and one, Wisconsin Lacrosse at 6-1, and one, Johns Hopkins at 7-0, and oh, Trinity out of Texas at 7-0, and oh, Linfield 6-0, and oh, St. John's at 6-0, Mary Harden-Baylor at 7-1, Mount Union at 7-1, and, and North Central champions from 2019. Um, they are currently number one. And, well, it's our last week, man. There are some solid football games. There's some upsets, yes, certainly, here. Close one here, number 20, Albion. And guess who, Taryn? Trying it. Well, trying this. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, Taryn. <laughs> You're like, trying. Trying has made its triumphant 
Look, that didn't sound very good. But triumphant return <laughs> <laughs> to three and out left from a couple of seasons ago. Man, we had quite the laugh. Uh, but Trine, Taryn, they're actually right now. Trine is, uh, well, let's take a look at what Trine's doing. Um, well, I can't really see their record. But they lost this game 20 to 19. Trying nearly, I'm talking about nearly by one point, man. Just felt, just lost to Albion at home, 20 to 19 last week. Mount Union, number two, Mount Union will just destroy Wilmington, 63 to three. Next up, we have here uh, number 22, Wisconsin Platteville. They will take down Whitewater. Number 10, Wisconsin Whitewater, 17 to 13. Larry Harden Baylor, number three, uh, will smack around Sol Ross State, 45 to 14. My gosh, what a big victory there. St. John's had their hands full with Gu uh, Gustavus Adolphus as they won this one at home, 41 to 27. A little too close for comfort, but a good game there. Trinity out of Texas. Number six, they'll defeat Barry 21 to 14. Another close game there. Harden Simmons will easily handle Southwestern 68 to 0 on the road. Also, our number one team in the land right now, North Central, will take out Washington University 31 to 0. So yeah, Taryn, some pretty good games here. Not really super duper crazy upsets. Uh, I think we had one in there. A near upset if it if, you know it is what it is, but overall, just you know, some some pretty good football. So yeah, any games from last week stand out to you, good sir? Uh no, I, I should just say there wasn't too many upsets, but that's kind of how it is sometimes. Maybe this week we're gonna have a lot of upsets. So I'm I think this week we're gonna do at least two upsets. So that's my call. Yeah, well, it's certainly some good stuff there, brother. So, moving on to this week, man. Uh, we have ourselves already some games going on right now. But looking at those top teams, Mount Union will be taking on uh, Otterbean, I believe. Otterbean, I want to butcher that name, but they'll be taking them on coming up today. Uh, we have H H Howard Simmons taking on Howard Payne. Uh, Wisconsin River Falls taking on Wisconsin Whitewater. Should be a little fun game to watch there. <laughs> um, next up, Linfield and George Fox. Uh, but yeah, really, I don't really know. Wisconsin Lacrosse versus Wisconsin Oshkosh, another good game. Also, Wisconsin Platteville versus Wisconsin Stout. Some of those solid Wisconsin teams in Division Three. Also, the number one team in the land, North Central, will be taking on North Park. Uh, and yeah, I don't really see anybody else. Looks like Mary Hart and Baylor might have the week off. They might have a bye week. This week, maybe maybe not, I don't know. Maybe I missed it. But yeah, nothing too eventful this week, Taryn. I don't really see too many eventful games. Yeah, neither do I, but that was constant with constant matchups. I think it's probably the best one just because you can't go wrong with the interstate rivalries and we put several games all together. You just got throughout the rest of it. No, that's for sure, Darren. You gotta love those battles there, and uh, yeah, definitely, definitely got to throw the records out when it comes to rivalry games. I think we can ask any of anybody who knows football well, so let's get a look on over to Division 2 now. We currently have the top 25 poll here, but the current top 10, Cole Mines at 6-2. and two. We have Ashland at 7-0. and oh. West Florida, hey, go Argos at 6-1. Delta State at 8-0. No. Shepard at 8-0. No. Ferris State after falling, man, they fell to Grand Valley a couple weeks back. They will fall to number 5 at 6-1. Pittsburgh State at 8-0. No. Uh, Chief the Baptist at 8-0. No. Angelo State at 8-0. No. And Grand Valley at 8-0. Oh. So that's how those will fall this week. Let's take a look at some of those games from last week. They certainly are there. Well, there was a couple. There was a couple that were uh, pretty solid here. Take a look at the website. <laughs> Alrighty, so moving back to last week. If I'm not mistaken, it was this one. Yeah, okay, alright. So, uh, a couple of couple of games that were, eh, I guess, I don't know, fun. <laughs> Some fun games. Last week we had here, let's see if we had any upsets. Well, Virginia Union took care of Lincoln... Pennsylvania, 45-20, to 20, number 12, Virginia Union, that is no surprise there. They have been quite the team this year, Taryn. Number 10, Ashland will defeat Tiffin, 28-20. to 20. 
Uh, Bowie State, man, they just continue to have the woes. They were ranked at one point in time, and they just have fallen from grace. They will lose the Chawan 21-15 to at home, and they are long removed from the days of Amir Hall when Mr. when our very own Daryl Smith, Daryl Smith, Daryl Kinsey Jr. went there a couple years back. Uh, man, it's a tough go for Bowie State. Number four, Ferris State will defeat Michigan Tech 28-20. to a little close call for Ferris State. They don't want to lose another one, but hey, they got the victory getting the taste out of their mouth from that loss they got from Grand Valley. What a game that was a couple weeks ago, though. Uh, that was pretty darn solid. And then, really, just nothing too eventful, Taryn. I mean, this, this was the, definitely the game of the week that we deemed last week. Newberry, number 21, Newberry versus number 19, Lenore Ryan. And, well, it looks like Newberry got the better of Lenore Ryan. 38-24. to 24. Talk about a good game there. Newberry wins this one on the road, a ranked-on-ranked game. And that was really it, Taryn. There's nothing too more exciting. Grand Valley will defeat Northern Michigan 56-3 to at home. The number one team, the new number one team in the land, the Lakers, are just doing great this season. Uh, definitely, definitely not the Los Angeles Lakers, but the Grand Valley Lakers are doing pretty good. So yeah, solid stuff there for those guys, and uh, really, like I said, nothing too more eventful here. Saginaw Valley played pretty well. Number twenty-three, Saginaw Valley versus Wayne State out of Michigan, twenty-one to twenty to fourteen. Good to see them rank. Saginaw Valley has this climb the ladder this year, so they've done really, really, really well. Angelo State, number two, Angelo State defeats Texas A&M Kingsville, number eighteen, Texas A&M Kingsville, thirty-four to seven uh, last week. And yeah, nothing too, like I said, nothing too much more eventful there. So yeah, Taryn, kind of cool. I, I want to point this out though. Um, Tarleton state, actually, I think they, this is interesting. They kept their, I don't know if this is a rivalry, but Southwest Baptist, a D2 school, Tarleton State, we know now, Taryn is an FCS school. Now they moved up, but kind of cool. They actually did get to play Southwest Baptist still. Uh, they're still on their schedule. So, yeah, 24 to 10. Charlton State wins this one, but Southwest, Southwest Baptist gave them quite the fight. So, I think it's pretty cool they're still playing um, each other. So, really good stuff there. Also, I think it's a rivalry here. Adam State in Colorado Mesa. Uh, that was a good st- good game there. Adam State winning 45 to 31. Also, Midwestern State will just barely eke out University of Texas Permian Basin, 24-23. So, anyway, Darren, any uh, of your thoughts from last week's games on uh, in Division Two? So, I don't know if you may know this one, but I uh, know. Uh, Renata Falls beat, or Renata State beat Falls Falls 20-17 as so Falls was the 11th ranked team. And then also, Minnesota State just laid down the wood against Augusta, beating them 35 to 14, which I thought those were my big upsets of the week last week. But yeah, everything, those were really, the Minnesota won, State won, my God, 21 points against number 14 ranked team. That is really low in the world. Woo! Yeah, that is absolutely laying in the wood there, Taryn. And yeah, we oh uh, have some problems hearing you again, brother. I don't know, we weren't too clear on that one, but but good stuff there, man. Well, yeah, we're about the uh, uh, leaf blower going by. Oh, you're good, you're good, you're good. Um, but yeah, man. Also, just yesterday, uh, a couple days ago, I'll cheat the Baptist number eight, number three. We'll take on East Central. On Thursday, they'll win that one 28-18 at home. And while well, Taryn, we're already underway with some games as we're past the 9 o'clock hour. We're heading up to 9.30 a.m. Pacific, 12.30 p.m. Eastern time. So as of right now, Taryn, uh, number 13, Slippery Rock is over Clar- Clarion, I believe. Clarion, 7-0. to zero. We have that game currently going on right now. Uh, but really, I mean, it's the meat and potatoes right now. We're getting a lot of rivalry games. We're right towards the end of the year. we got Michigan Tech taking on Grand Valley, number one Grand Valley, coming up in just a, about an hour, a half an hour. Uh, number five, Ferris State will host Northern Michigan. Minot State will take on Minnesota Duluth. Um, Davenport, number 24, Davenport takes on number 20, Saginaw Valley. That should be another good one there. Chilon will take on number 11, uh, Virginia Union. Another solid school there. So, yeah, man, I'm telling you, another solid game. Bowie State and Elizabeth City. I mean, let's see how that one goes. If Bowie State can 
they've redeemed themselves. I don't know how Elizabeth City's season has gone this year, but I do know that Bowie State's, uh, you know, we talked about it, has just been going downhill, so maybe they can redeem themselves. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, Taryn, I mean, really, as we just go down this list of uh, Division Two games, just, you know, not really any ranked on ranks. We do have a big one here, though. Northwest, uh, Northwest Missouri will be taking on Nebraska Kearney. Northwest Missouri currently number 14. Nebraska Ker Kearney currently number 19 there. So, yeah, other than that, turn, like I said, not a, not a lot to talk about there. And that's that's pretty much how D2 is going to wrap up this week, man. How, uh, any games you're looking forward to for D2 this week? Uh, well, I can say there is, there's only one ranked on ranked game, Gavin Ford at Saginaw Valley. That's probably the game I'm looking forward to the most. But other than that, I think, I guess maybe Ferris is most Northern Michigan could be a game to watch for, but I'm laying my hands on Gavin Ford and Saginaw Valley. I think so, too. Saginaw Valley this year has just proven it, Taryn, haven't they? I mean, this school has really just done it. They've played well, and they look good, man. So you know what? I'm looking forward to them this, this week. Um, but last, okay, so now we get to go around into the FCS. And currently, out of currently, uh, courtesy of NCAA.com, the current top ten right now, Montana at 5-2. and two. UIW at seven and zero, or seven and one. Holy Cross at seven and one. Weber State at six and one. Chattanooga at six and one. Jackson State at seven and zero. We have here uh, current top five, by the way. Jackson State at seven and zero. North Dakota State falling from grace after losing to South Dakota State last week in that heated rivalry match. Uh, five and two now. North Dakota State sits at and uh, currently number four. Sacramento State at seven and zero. Montana State at seven and one. And South Dakota State, you guessed it. At number one at seven and one. Well, last week, Darren, we had some uh, some games, man. I mean, of course, I think you know the big shocker a couple weeks ago: South Dakota State defeating North Dakota State. I mean, that was the that was the one, man. <laughs> that was the game. I think if all of us were excited about something for the FCS this year, it's always that crazy upset. We've seen a few of them throughout the different. Uh, you know, realms of college football this year. We've definitely, definitely seen some good ones. So, yeah, and then last week, really, I don't know, there really wasn't anything too eventful. I mean, I didn't see anything that was crazy just jumping off at me. Um, South Dakota State will defeat North Dakota 49-39, to or 35 I mean, you know, it, it wasn't the worst game. South Dakota State, though, is definitely asserting that they're number one. Sacramento State, in overtime, will knock off the Grizzlies of Montana. That, I think, was probably one of the better games. 31-24 to at home. Sacramento State wins this one. Uh, also, East Washington defeating Cal Poly 17-10. to Cal Poly is just having a rough go there, man. Uh, we talked about Tarleton already out playing. I think that might be the rival, Southwest, Southwestern Baptist 24-10. to But overall, man, um, just, just, like I said, I, I don't want to say uneventful, but it wasn't the most exciting week in the FCS, at least from what I'm seeing here. Last week, I didn't really get, to ch get a chance to look at anything. I was like homework central getting crap done last week, so... Uh, definitely didn't didn't really follow it too much. Regardless, though, Darren, that was, eh, I don't know, I mean, I, I guess an Ivy League game here. Princeton versus Harvard. Princeton defeating Harvard 37-10. to But other than that, nothing really too eventful. Uh, any any standouts for you last week for Division? So, so, so for the FBS, yeah, Montana State, uh, Montana State really stood out to me. It was also played on National TV. I think it's actually, it's got, Put on ESPN too, and it was definitely a bomb during a winning in overtime. One of the performance of Sacramento State, they actually had to come up big in the fourth quarter. They were down 17 7 in the fourth, heading into the fourth, and then they turned the tide, and then they managed to get a big score to stay undefeated in, in XPS play or in their season. So, watch out for Sacramento State. They could provide the stream on some of these other teams. They could, man, and we shall see. So, last but not least, Aaron, let's just continue to roll on into today's games. We talked about our top ten already in college, well, in, in the FCS. And, you know, this week, I don't know, doesn't look too 
<laughs> Still looks a little bland, Darren. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if you see anything. Jump out if you do. But um, maybe I'm missing something, or I just don't see it just yet. I should have been a little bit more prepared for this section. Sorry, but uh, well, overall, Darren. I mean, Montana Weber State looks like that actually could be a pretty game. I think they're both ranked. Uh, Portland State and East Washington. I I don't know if that's a rivalry, but it should be. <laughs> uh, Cal Poly and UC Davis should be a pretty good one. Uh, Tarleton State and Sam Houston. I like this one. I don't even think Tarleton's ranked. They might be. I don't know. But once again, guys, just keep on the watch. Tarleton State. They were a Division Two last year. Now they're Division uh, One Double A, and they're playing a freaking team that just won the title a couple of years ago in Sam Houston State, the Bearcats. I'm all for this, man. This is a good game. Let's see what Tarleton State really has. This is their test of the season. If they ever had a test here, this is their test. So we're going to see what they look like, man. I'm excited. What if this team that was just Division II last year upsets Sam Houston State? That's pretty cool. Also, Idaho, a team that actually was uh, kind of crazy. Idaho was actually a single-A team, for those of you who remember the Vandals, uh, and they dropped down to FCS. And I think they've had better goings um, as an FCS team. And, well, Sac State, man. How about that? They will be taking on Sac State today. So, yeah, Taryn, any, uh, how about that? Any uh, FCS games jump out at you today? The one that I thought I think is kind of a little underrated is Cornell at Princeton. The Ivy League school, hmm. Princeton is surprisingly undefeated. So that may be something to watch out for. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Definitely a good one there. Um, and right now, well, let's just get on over to the, F the FBS, what everyone's talking about. Number two, Ohio State, and number 13, Penn State. That's currently over on USRN2 on Mr.com. You want to go check that game out. Mr. Adam Karnick of iSports Radio was on the call. And Ohio State, man, uh, leading 10-0 to zero in the first quarter so far. Uh, Notre Dame and number 16, Syracuse, 7-7 seven to seven so far in this one. And then that's, that's kind of it. I mean, eh, that's a little, there's some other games on right now, but those are kind of, the, in my opinion, the better ones. Then, turn we have this. Today, our USC Trojans take on Arizona. USC is favored by 14 points, but hey. It should be a good game, right? So we got that going on. San Diego State and Fresno State. It's it's a good game. It's just a good one. This is a definitely a battle here in the Mountain West. These two teams are going to go head to head. I love it, and uh, I'm just really excited to see this one. Fresno State is actually favored ten to zero. I didn't hear a whole bunch of the SoCal from Schwartz yesterday, Taryn. Forgive me uh, at work and uh, work and everything, but still not still not an excuse. Gotta do my best to tune in. But, Darren, it uh, should be a good game there. You might want to talk about that one, if you'd like. Uh, also, number eight, Oregon and Cal. Eh, it's not really a good game. I don't know. Uh, number one, Georgia hosting Florida coming up later on today. Like I said, like I said earlier, it, it's, it's not the most exciting league. Um, I mean, our Saturday night football game is Michigan State versus number four, Michigan. And we just, of course, that's probably because the ABC I guess, contract they have with the Big Ten, I'm guessing, or if they do, I don't know. Stanford and UCLA going head-to-head -head here. Number 12, UCLA and unranked Stanford. Nevada and San Jose State. I mean, yeah, not much of a not much of a plethora of good games. East Carolina, though, hats off to them. Last night, a little defeat BYU, 27-24. I know Miss Angela Winstead is happy about this one, man. Her, her Pirates are 6-3, and three, dropping BYU to 4-5. and five. Uh, So, kind of crazy there. Also, NC State will knock off Virginia Tech 20 to 22 to 21 here. Uh, also, Southern Miss, hey, Southern Miss will defeat Louisiana, the Raging Cajuns, 39 to 24. And number 14, Utah, over Washington State, 21 to 17. So, Taryn, I don't know, man. I mean, there's a lot of games to look for, I guess, today. I guess if I have to look at any game... That's like the best one. It's on right now. That, of course, is Penn State and Ohio State. But how about you, brother? Any any games you're looking out for today? Also, I keep an eye out for Kentucky and Tennessee. Something I actually did realize on Thursday was that Utah actually won without their quarterback Sam Rising. So the fact that their backup was able to come in and lead Utah to the victory is crucial. Just because Washington State is vastly underrated, 
And if Utah lost that one, that would have really hurt their Pac-12 championship hope. So they still have a gauntlet to go through. They have to play Oregon, which that could basically decide who goes forward and who doesn't. It's almost going to be as big as USC versus UCLA. But, yeah, between USC, LA, USC, Utah, and Oregon, those are basically your four favorites to possibly win. And Oregon's the only one that doesn't have a Pac-12 conference loss. That's pretty crazy, man. Um, certainly looking forward to some good games today. And we shall see what goes down. So, it's already 10-0, to 0, Ohio State. Is it safe to say we're both taking Ohio State in this game over Penn State, Darren? <laughs> yeah. You need the back Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, of course, obviously, we're both taking Air, uh, USC over Arizona as two USC fans. Oklahoma State, number nine Oklahoma State, at number 22 Kansas State. Kansas State is favored by one and a half points. What do you think, Darren? Uh, Oklahoma State, Kansas State. I got to go with Oklahoma State. I think that win over Texas, even though Texas is not fast, I think it's so big right there. And then Kansas State obviously lost to TCU. So give me Oklahoma State. Yeah, well, give me the team in purple. I'm going to go with Kansas State. They have a lot to prove, man. So it's a, it's a good Big 12 matchup there. Taryn, we got number 19, Kentucky, and number 3, Tennessee, that you mentioned earlier. It's 11 and a half for Tennessee. The Vols knocked off Alabama this year. It's kind of hard to not take them. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to probably pick Tennessee for this one. Yeah, me too. Uh, Stanford, why not, man? Stanford, UCLA. <laughs> Stanford is three and four. UCLA is six and one. Uh, UCLA favored by sixteen and a half points. Uh, yeah, give me the Bruins. <laughs> yeah, Stanford two very days. I love it one two in a row. UCLA is going to go off, off that map and defeat Arnold. Yeah, and last but not least, Darren. Apparently, the game of the week. Um, <laughs> number four, Michigan will host Michigan State in that rivalry. We've seen crazier things. Throw the records out. Uh, that block punt a couple of years back. My gosh, where I think Michigan State defeated Michigan. That was crazy. Are we going to get that again, Taryn? Michigan is favored by 23 points. Are, are we going to get something like that again, do you think? Or, or is Michigan pretty much solid on this victory? What do you think? I have to give it to Michigan. I, I don't think Michigan State has wowed me. They had a few, a few losses. My only thing I'll say is it would be very Michigan State of them to win this game and not win some of the other games that they've lost, like Washington. Yeah, agreed, Taryn. So, with that said, but that's pretty much that, man. We don't got much more to cover. Uh, we had ourselves a really, that was a fun show, man. It was a long one, but dude, it was good. Lots and lots and lots to talk about today. There are so many games to watch, guys. If you listen to the duration of the show, we applaud you. We want to say thank you very much for being here today. You guys are awesome. Um, it was just a good one, and we certainly enjoyed bringing it to you. So, yeah, man, that was pretty awesome. And, well, with that said, guys, that's going to pretty much do it. Taryn, any final thoughts before we're out of here today, man? So, wait, hold on. Sorry, there was a, well, a motor going by. But um, one thing I do need to give a shout-out to is Long Beach College football team. They have tied the record for fewest points given up in Morley play with six. That basically ties the, I want to say it was like the 1971 Millican Rams for fewest points given up in Morley play. So it's incredible that Long Beach Poly did that. My only thing is that where are they going to be in terms of the uh, Cal Prep rankings? Because tomorrow, like I said, if that's basically the... It's basically more, it's judgment day. All the brackets come out. And fun fact about Long Beach Poly, Long Beach Poly is responsible for having the whole shifting of, of like, CIF, Southern Section Brackets. Like, for example, they would always dominate the Moore League, and it used to be certain leagues were placed in certain divisions. Like, the Moore League was placed in, like, the Pac-5 the Pac Division, a.k.a. Division One. And they would basically drag their other teams, the other top four teams, into the CIF playoffs. And most of them would either get one and done or would pull off a stunning upset. But it would mainly be Long Beach Poly advancing through to the playoffs and basically just ripping everybody to shreds for the most part. But 
But I'll tell you a little fun fact nugget right there. Long Beach Poly ties the Milken Rams back in the 70s for fewest points given up in more league play. And Poly finishes a perfect 10-0. and 0. They have one of the top players in the nation in Dalen Austin. I think he's only a junior. So I really think that Poly is going to be something to watch for in the playoffs. So. That's pretty awesome, brother. And I know we didn't really do the high school spotlight today, man, but how about those Newport Sailors? Yep. The ugly game they played uh, last night against Huntington Beach, they jumped out to a 14 nothing lead. They nearly shut out Huntington Beach, but they gave up a late touchdown. They won 24-6. It wasn't their best game, but, hey, we'll see what their playoff, uh, what, what it looks like for them in the postseason tomorrow. Remember, 10 a.m. Pacific time. That's when all the brackets come out. 10 a.m. Pacific time. Well, tomorrow we shall be on it uh, when NFL starts. <laughs> so with that said, <laughs> Terry, well, actually, we got a, we got a, ooh, we got a uh, England game tomorrow, so we're going to be up bright and early tomorrow, 6.30 a.m. Pacific time, 9.30 a.m. Eastern. So Broncos and Jaguars get set on uh, in England. And, yes, there will be three and out this week, even if I have to do it on this Mac. So my apologies once again, guys, for the quality. It wasn't the best as it's been the last couple of weeks, as I said. The Mac just has to update. Uh, Spreaker has to basically update their freaking app. Hopefully they will. <laughs> They've been good to us. So, oh yeah, Spreaker will update soon, hopefully. But, anyway, with that said, guys, I think it's about that time to cue the music because we're out of here. Man, what a show. Dan, any last thoughts for today, man? No, I think I've pretty much covered it. You can follow me on Twitter at Darren Rodriguez One. That's T E R A N Rodriguez, and then the number one. You can follow me, Brother Larry B, at the T H E E underscore L B five three on Twitter. Man, no three and out this week is kind of rough. I might do one later on just for the heck of it. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. But I do know this. I do know this. We're going to have ourselves a primetime face-off tomorrow. It should be a good one, y'all. Make sure to tune in. YouTube, of course. Packers and Bills. And we'll have Monday's Monday night face-off. Uh, Monday night primetime face-off for Bengals and Browns on Halloween night. Should be a good one there. Make sure to follow us on social media at IE Sports Radio pretty much everywhere. Follow our website at IESportsRadio.com. i got to update that thing. Uh, been crazy a couple weeks, though, guys, so forgive me. Work has been crazy, but it's been fun, too. So with that said, you guys, that's pretty much it. Make sure to give us a follow at 3 and out all spelled out, I-E-C-R-C-E-I-E. Once again, at 3 and out C-E-I-E. And that'll do it, guys. Tons of great football around the country. Make sure to check out all of it as we cover all of high school and college football here, at least, or at least we try to do our best here on 3 and Out College Edition. With that said, you guys, for my boy, Mr. Taron Rodriguez, for me, your boy, Larry B, signing off. We will see you guys next week. The playoffs will be in full swing for CIF. Crazier times in college football, and, well, we're just getting ready for these playoffs. Once again, thank you all so very much for tuning in to 3 and Out College Edition right here on IE Sports Radio. You're direct people for all other sports. We'll see you all next week. Until then, take care, and as always, God bless.